Hello YouTube, this is Joe from Joe's shop and let's have a look. Now the dog doesn't like me talking downstairs, he thinks I got people over here, but we're going to have to get by that. Anyway, if you go up to the top of this thing, the first thing we're going to have to do is structurally make this thing sound, okay? Now it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's fairly simple. What you need is to box in your joists, at least three of them you're going to, or yeah, at least three pieces you're going to work with. I put some flats down on the bottom. This has all been uh, reworked so many times. It's just unbelievable. So yours isn't going to look all cobbled probably like mine does. But in any event, you're trying to go from one joist to the next and make them all united for these right here. And you're going to have your snout going straight down to your saw from where this zone is right here. So your table saw should be directly below about the middle of your span. And hopefully you don't have a lot of traffic up ahead or up above you that's heavy. Because if you're moving around either heavy people or heavy things while you're trying to make the saw work, you're going to notice that that's going on upstairs. All right, without further ado, let's get started. You're going to need a very large piano hinge in the back side. I'm using a 12 inch piano hinge with a 3 8 pin. Okay, right here. 3 8 diameter pin. It's 5 8 overall. And then you're going to block it in. You need, these are 4 by 4 wings on the side, actually 4 and a half up and down by 4. And this is 4 and a half by 1 and a half cleat. And you're going to box this all in so this is glued, screwed, and ready to go really, really strong on the back holding that hinge. Okay? Then on the front, what I've done is I took a 90 degree angle plate and I screwed that to the front of the thing with four screws. And then I used what I'm calling some standoffs so that this thing stays uh, really, really rigid left to right. So instead of just using a center location right here with a bolt, I've chosen to put little standoffs on either side of this pad. I don't know if you can see them. They're only about a sixteenth high, all the way on the outside. So when this thing is closed up, you're putting a load in the middle, which is starting to flex this top plate, but it's loading the left and right side, which is making your stability much better than just one location up the middle with a tightened bolt. Get it? because we need this thing really strong left to right because it's going to be about four feet long your snout. This one's actually 44 inches long by 11 inches by four and a quarter. All made out of three quarter inch stock. And the inside one's about 13 inches tall and fits within a 30 second slop of the other one. So it works nice and free. <clears throat> now, I have you still staring at the ceiling but what I was getting at here is this part down below. This is still going to work nice and freely. I have four inches of travel on mine. It's all the way down to the bottom when it's actually touching on the deck. So that I can run the thinnest material possible. And then you can get as thick as your saw blade is going to get underneath here. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is have it set let me go back up to the top again, give you guys a top view so you can see what I'm doing here. This up at the top has to swing in such a way that when you open this up, I want it to clear, well, you're going to want it to clear your saw blades so that you can change saw blades or do whatever you need to do without making, taking the whole thing back up in the air. At which time, it gives you really good access to the blade. All right, this just free, free um, swings out of the way based on how you're hinging it in back and how deep the unit is itself. And because it's this deep and you're hinging it from the back up there, you get this. So now you can change your blade freely. You have all the room in the world to do whatever you need, okay? So next, we'll have a look at what the inside guts really look like. I think you understand that you need to block this in up above 
so that none of the pieces of wood can flex once you mount your hinge and you, you can't have any flex because a tiny bit of flex up there is a lot of flex four feet down below. And feel free to change whatever you need. This isn't the best design by any means. This is uh, Rev 1. It's 30 years old and oh my god could I make it better today if I were to build another. So feel free to have fun in the design. Um, up at the top, by the way, the only other thing I didn't mention is how you captive or how you make this captive up at the top. What I did is I simply took a piece of channel. This is like a half inch deep by like one inch, about an eighth inch thick. And I put a, I welded a nut inside of here really well. And then screwed this four different times onto here. And that nut that I'm using is a super heavy duty nut, so it's extra tall. And I think it's uh, doing its job because it's a fine thread. And I don't know if you can see this, but here's what I use to fasten it with. Super fine thread, 3 8 diameter. And it's been working for 30 years. You do not need to over tighten this. You just need to snug it down and you will be good to go. All right, next, let's have a look at the inside of this thing and what makes it all tick. Let's get to the meat and potatoes because I'm sure that's what you guys are really looking for. The inside of this snout that has the wheels and everything, we're gonna look at that next. Okay, now what we have are the four bolts I just took out, very simply made. I just have a washer on the end of, after I welded it on, I put a washer and then just a piece a nylon washer after that so that you don't mar up the wood on the side of this from changing it up and down and by the way I did a light coating of CA on here and then re-sanded it so it makes it really strong on top and then I never over tighten these you don't need to lightly snug do not over tighten this is 30 years of I'm telling you so much use it's unbelievable and I have no divots on here from over tightening anything one little mark, I don't know why you're even seeing it, but it's, it's worked really well for me. Uh, light snugging is so much friction, it works fantastic. Next I'll take this apart for you and let's see what's inside. Alright, so now I guess the first thing we can do is let's just take one of these out for you so that you can kind of see how this all works. These are put on with light Loctite, that purple stuff. Okay, here's the meat and potatoes, guys, right here. Okay. Now, one thing you'll notice is I made these stops to stop the bolts from moving around. You don't need to do that. You can then get inside with a wrench and do this instead. But these are just designed so you can do this. And it doesn't move around when you're trying to tighten it. That's it. They have to be able to come out, otherwise you won't be able to take the thing out of there. So you can't glue them in. But these are all on bearings. Each one of these has a bearing in it. They need to operate smooth and they can't have a lot of slop left to right. A little bit's okay, but you don't want a lot because it's got to hold your part down while the saw blade's screaming. Um, what I didn't have at the time are the proper bolts to do this. Now, I did these out of stainless steel. It's all I had. But you can see that the blade is smashed into these uh, over the years due to some nasty things that happened on the outside and it saved me from getting... Uh, let's say chewed up by the blade as the snout got hit rather hard and these got bashed into the blade. But the idea here is you guys, oh that's nice, is you want these to be put on here in such a way that your blade is going to be perfectly up the middle for the table saw and these are holding down on the left and right side of the blade 
just a little bit away from the blade. I do leave some clearance, about a half inch, a little under a half inch either side of the blade before my little uh, O-rings here on these pieces start. Now, I made these simply out of uh, some uh, nylon I had laying around, some inch and a half stock. I drilled a hole large enough for a small bearing, put that in there. Then I put a groove around each one so I could put a square O-ring in these each one of these. Now, you don't have to have a square O-ring. It just happens to be that's all I had handy. A regular O-ring will work great. But you just need to have a little load on it so when you put it on, it's held tight around here so that they don't slip off while you're moving wood around underneath and what have you. I've only had one come off in all 30 years, so I guess we're doing pretty good. Now, these next pieces simply have a half inch slop with a spring. Now, you don't get all a half inch travel, but you don't need it. All you need it is to move up and down a little bit with the tiny variations you're going to have for warp and whatnot in pieces of wood. If you wanted more travel, you can screw the screw out a little bit. I have it tensioned up to put a little more pressure downward on the wood. Uh, these aren't very strong. I would guess that this is maybe a pound of force, maybe a pound and a half I'm putting a, a, against this spring. All right, so two of those together. It's a pretty decent load on those rollers to keep everything tight down to your surface. Now, next, you're gonna to need to cut a slot. So after you build your chute, you can just run this through the table saw straight up and down and do two cuts and give yourself your room for these to sit. <clears throat> now, I have a little bit of extra room in these, not a lot, but a little bit so that you can move left and right just a hair so these go in and out really smooth. The key is to have everything smooth. And speaking of smooth, you're going to need these screws that go into the polycarbonate or whatever you're going to use. Need to have the threads ground off so you get down to the root diameter of the screw. Don't go any further, just remove the threads for your distance traveled so this thing doesn't ratchet on the edge of the screw threads, okay? And then next, you don't have to have a tapered spring either. If you have them, great. If you don't, no biggie. This is just a cut off of some extrusion I had laying around. I made it short one way and left the full width the other. I think this is a one inch extrusion both ways. I just cut some extra off and then I bead blasted it to make it look like it's plated or something to make it look good. But it's, it's all it is, a piece of aluminum eighth inch thick. These are about uh, three quarters of an inch wide just a hair under by about one inch overall and they only stick out a half inch this way but you can modify this all you want people I mean I'm sure you're gonna have better ideas than I did this was a long time ago now on the back you're gonna want your screws to all be perfectly flush or you're gonna have to make some cutouts like I did here which were a pain in the butt to do but at the time I didn't have any way to cut off all these bolts properly so I didn't care, I just did that instead. You don't need to do it. Save yourself all the hassle and headache. Again, you don't have to put these in either. Uh, I think the other important things from there are what I call wipes, okay? Now, when this is on the saw, I gotta make sure the camera can see this perfect here. Come on, okay. When this is on the saw, this wipe here is going to need to be proud of the rollers by just a little bit. So when you stick your wood in, it flexes forward. I don't know how you can see this perfect or not. This needs to flex forward. Okay, and I have a little bend in there. That little scoop catches all the dust and throws it upward. Very important. And I have a second one, too, that's equal with the top of where your rollers are. And you're going to want that also. That, if anything misses and comes by the rollers, this catches it and it sends it up the snout, making this whole thing dustless. And it really, 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 truly does work as dustless. Until you're at the end of the cut, and then you get that little fleck. of uh, dirt. Now, on the inside of this, 
You do not need these pieces that I've put on top. I simply cut a 45 degree angle in here to start with so that when you move the chute up and down it shears all the crap off the wall and comes down the chute versus going down inside of here. Doesn't matter. You don't need it. It's ridiculous. Save your time. You don't even have to do this 45 degree angle, but it's easy to do once the thing is made to just run it through the table saw. Super easy to do. And it actually helps the effectiveness a little bit for the vacuum. Another thing inside, I hope you can see this. There's a block in there. So that half of this is blocked off. Okay? And the part that's blocked off, come on camera update, there we go. The block off has to do with this is the leading edge of where your wood is going into. So the majority of your vacuum is now concentrated in the first few inches here. The block is only to trip up the vacuum and make it work more in the beginning. That's all it's for, just to be a more intense vacuum. Okay? Do you have to have that? No. Does it work better with it? It certainly does. So, just a thought. Now these are all going to have to be tightened so perfectly that you can still move the washers around. You can still feel the bolt moving just a little bit, but there's still just enough tension on them that they're not wobbly in here. Just enough that they're moving around freely. And that's where you want the Loctite to set. Once you have those nuts tightened just right with just a hair of load on there, and I mean a hair. I mean mine are even just a speck of loose. They weren't that loose 30 years ago, but that's all right, the wood's drying out. It's not the end of the world and it still works super nice. So all right guys, that's what we got. Um, for the end of this, I can give you some really crappy drawings, but it pretty much says it all right here. This is a front-on view with your table saw being down here, and you can pretty much tell with all the little mini dimensions what you need. I have a seven and a half inch uh, space between the top of my table and where the snout starts. And it's, it's little hacks like that that might help you out, um, telling you certain, certain things about it. But feel free. Again, this is all your ideas, not mine. I'm just giving you a Kickstarter of uh, how to kind of get it going. This is a view of the thing up in the air, so you're seeing the end of it. Here's that metal plate that holds it to the ceiling. Here's the actual snout. Here's the hinge. That's kind of showing you how that's done. Uh, this is the side-on view of this thing, how it all works. There's just a couple dimensions here that you'll probably want, so pick those up as you need them. And then there's one more here kind of showing you how the wheels work in relationship to the polycarbonate piece here. That's that part right there. Okay, and you can kind of see how it all works. Your, your full travel distance, and stuff like that. You guys, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll answer you back. I generally look at the email every day or so, so I should be able to help you out. And uh, you guys have a lot of fun with it, and we will talk to you next time about what we're going to do in Joe's shop. Have a good one.